Alrighty. So our first alkane over here, what'd you guys get? Two methyl, two methyl butane. Yes, very good. You guys saw that that is the longest chain. One, two, three, four. So don't get thrown off because of this being the shape, uh, the straight chain. If you had named it ethyl in any way, that ethyl is too long. Cool. All right, this one here. What'd you get? Four ethyl pentane. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Yep. Kept saying. And then ethyl, and it's on carbon number four. Awesome. Cool. Feeling better about this stuff? Yeah. So the first one, you had one, two, three, four. So this bit here was the side chain, that methyl. You see it? Okay. All right, cool. Before we move on into the actual content, which is going to be about, um, talking about isomers and also the halo alkanes. I just want to prepare us for some remote learning because I know next week we are going remotely. Um, so at the end of today, I want you guys to take home your side pads, which you normally do anyway, because most of you guys are eager beavers and you take it home because you want to keep working. Um, some of you guys have not been given a side pad yet because you only asked for that one external. So for the time being, I've given you an ESA guide instead to work out of. Um, I will obviously post work for both the SciPad and the ESA, so you have lots of op um, options. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post just as our normal lessons, and I will um, include a list of choices. So Mahi choice will still be a thing when you guys are working remotely. All the work will be posted on Google Classroom. I will make any video lessons in case there's new content, so that way you guys can watch it, have it explained to you, and then go on and do some book work. Um, so. What I will do for my posts going forward, and I've already started to do that, is I'm assigning them as CAMI assignments. Um, so that way you have editable, digital versions of things. Um, I'm very mindful some of you guys uh, won't have access to the textbooks we have in class and things like that. And so it's important that I have digital things online for you. Um, I'm happy for you to show evidence in any way. You can show it editing the PDF on the CAMI. Um, you can the answers into that UEG Google Doc that I've created for organic chemistry. The other option is you do things on paper, you take photographs of it, and then you can either send it to me through email, through the Hangout message, or you can put it into that Google Doc as well. I'm happy to look for work in any location and whatever works for you guys. Uh, just make sure you make a comment when you have done work so I know where to look for it. Cool. So comment on the actual classroom announcement that I have or classroom assignment. Um, you will know if I've given a point value out of eight to it. So if we look at level three chemistry, and we look at classwork, because I'm very mindful we need to start collecting evidence. With this isomers lesson, I have already um, created it as a cami and I've attached the documents on there for it. Uh, and what you'll notice with it is, oh, let me view the assignment. It's gonna be marked out of eight points, uh, just like an NCA style question. Uh, some work obviously won't go up to the excellence level because it's just surface level things. Um, but I will mark each assignment out of eight um, and I will update it. So if you have done more work for it, I will increase the grade. Cool. So it's not a set in stone kind of grade. It's just for us to kind of collect evidence and for me to kind of keep track of it. And what I will do is I'll create a, a spreadsheet with everyone's names and I will take note of everything you've given me and what I've given it point-wise. So that way, again, we have a very strong evidence if we need to derive any grades. Does that make sense to everyone? All right, when you finish your work, can you please just comment on the announcement, uh, tag me, things like that. Um, if you do a private comment, then I get that message that you have done some work and then I know to go check it. Cool, and I just comment and also comment where it is. So that way I know where to look for it. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So that's that as a beginner. Uh, what else do I need to talk to you about? Is that um, for our classroom time, uh, you know how the timetable has been switched. And so we have half hour for session one, session two, session three, and then you have the afternoon free to get work done. Um, what I have decided is I will use our half hour as Google Meet time. Um, and that's for you guys just to pop in and ask me any questions. Uh, there's no mandatory um, attendance to it. So if you don't have any questions, you don't need to hop online. 
Um, I'm still also taking any questions, hang out, email, that sort of thing. And that can be any time of the day. I don't mind if it's outside of our set class time. It just means during that half hour, if you want to see face to face with me, you still can. Does that make sense? Uh, and then I'll mark the attendance based off of have you shown me any uh, online engagement. So even if you haven't attended the Google Meet, if you're sending me messages or you're completing work and letting me know that work's completed, then I'll mark you as engaging and on um, attended. Does that sound like a good plan? All right. Cool. Um, if you have any connectivity issues, please let me know. And if you can't access the work that I'm putting online, again, please let me know. I'm happy to text you pages to do in the SciPad instead. And that way you can still keep doing work and then you can text me back when things are done. Does that make sense? So I'll have a check in with you guys as you have one of your study or as you have uh, some time today to get some work done. I'll check in to see if anybody needs text instructions, but I'll also put my number online as well. If you guys need to let me know if anything drastically happens. Cool. All right. Keep going. So I make sure all that is clear. Okay. So lesson plan for today, this is the one that we were going to do uh, earlier this week, but you guys needed some study time, which is fine. Um, there's two main themes for today's lesson. It's going to be isomers, and it's going to be halocane. Um, and halocanes are a really good way to start introducing the isomers. So I'll give you a little bit of notes. Uh, then you guys will have a chance to uh, do some practice. Then I'll start going on to the halocanes. You guys will have a chance to do some more practice. And then we will do... Um, Talk, start talking about the reactions so we can think about the flow chart and then we'll wrap up with the mahi choice. Cool. All right. Uh, and like I said, the success criteria is going to be a little bit all over the show because we're starting to look at bit, bits and pieces of organic chemistry. The thing that's tricky about organic chemistry is that you do need to understand all of it to kind of piece it together. Um, we're obviously still focusing on the naming and the drawing. And in this case, we're going to start introducing the halo alkanes into that. Um, we are starting the isomers, but we won't be doing any of the enanomers just yet. It's just going to be structural for today, also known as constitutional. Um, and then we're also going to be starting to look at those reactions, so some of the substitution reactions and some of the elimination reactions. Cool. All right. So let's talk about formulas as a nice little reminder. The first formula we need to think about are the empirical formula. So the empirical formula is just the formula that has the full number of atoms in that molecular compound. Uh, there's no simplification of that. It's just the number of atoms and their set ratio. Um, the second one, then, is their molecular formula. So that is basically a simplified version. If we're thinking about fractions, like a simplified fraction. This is the best way I can describe it as. Um, and basically, it's just a uh, ratio of the number. So that formula might be times two, it might be times three. This is going to be important for some of the questions we look at later, because when they give us questions, they might just give you the empirical formula, they might give you the molecular formula, and you have to figure out what ratio that molecular formula must be. Uh, it's also going to be useful when you spec. So do make sure you know that vocabulary. Don't worry about like madly copying it down. It is in your booklet of notes. I see a lot of people writing down what I have on the board. And once again, I'm trying to remind you that you don't need to do that because that's cruel and unusual punishment. There you go. Right here. It's right here. You don't need to worry about copying it down. It is in the booklet. And the PowerPoint is online. So everything is not going to disappear. I just want to give it to you. All right. I would instead of write down things that I'm saying because the things that I'm saying are not on the PowerPoint. It's just more explanation. All right, and then structural is when we have that um, empirical formula and we're actually trying to show how the different atoms are bonded together because when we look at isomers, we can see there's lots of different ways they could be bonded together. Uh, 3D is going to be what we're going to be using for the enanomers. Uh, or the optical isomers, it helps show their arrangement in space. And you guys did do a little bit with 3D structure uh, when you're doing your Lewis structures and shapes last year. So that would be kind of similar to what we've done previously. Cool. All right, here are some examples. Um, oh, wait, I think I'm here for a molecular wrong. It's right in my head. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Dang. All right, molecular is the full formula. Empirical is a simplified version. I totally read that wrong. Um, so in this case, with this example with ethane, 
the full molecular formula is saying two hyd or sorry two carbons and six hydrogens, but I could simplify that ratio and say one to three. Okay. All right. Uh, here is an example of a structural formula, so you can actually see how these carbons are arranged and bonded together. And then this is their 3D formula, so you can see how all the atoms are arranged in place. Uh, you won't need to draw anything that big, uh, but just to give you an idea of what each one looks like. Cool. All right, so what I will do is I will start by showing you uh, some structural formulas and how to kind of set up this question or set up your answer to this question. Um, this is a really important skill set to have for two reasons. First off, there's going to be an organic question where you will have to have some idea of structural isomers. Um, and you will also need this for structure and bonding because when we do structure and bonding, not structure and bonding, um, spec, because when we do spec, you're going to be figuring out an unknown molecule. So they'll give you things like the molecular formula or they'll give you the empirical formula. And from that, you need to figure out what potential compound you have looking at the data. So it's something like as a skill set you need to learn. So I've chosen a really simple. There's also more information I can look at it and it tells me more hints. So two things I should think about. So I saw in that example that they have given me uh, C4H10, I believe. What on the page? Yes, it is. Okay. I need to figure out all the potential structural isomers that I have from that. The first thing I should always look at whenever I'm given a molecular uh, formula is I should check the ratios between the carbon and the hydrogen because that can give me hints about what function group might be there. So when I'm looking at that, I notice that for every one um, carbon that I have, there's two times as many hydrogens plus two for the hydrogens at the end. So what that tells me right away is that I'm dealing with an alkane. If I was dealing with an alkene and I had a double bond, this would instead be H. So you see how looking at the formula itself can give you hints right away. Yeah, really good thing to do because we're gonna have questions like this later and also comes to that. What I like to do when I'm trying to figure out my isomers is I draw the long chain first. And then I start moving around hydrogens, or start moving around carbons to see if I have other choices. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, you can put the hydrogens down at the end. I find it's easy to kind of manipulate and move things around by just having the carbons move and then filling in the molecule to double check it. So I have a straight chain, and if I have a straight chain, that's my um, butane. I can also have one, two, three. And now I'm moving my one carbon. I then think, is there any point of me putting that carbon on the first one or on the third one? No, because it's still this molecule. So I'm done with my threes, right? And this is what I want you to think about when you're working. Start with the longest chain, move the thing around, then start doing the next one. So I've maxed out all the things I can do with three. Is there anything that I can do with two? No, I can't put something here that's three now, and I can't put something there, now I'm back to four. Yeah? So there's only two isomers for this one. If I'm not sure, always go and name them, because naming is a good way to check if you have it right or wrong. So when I put this guy in, that's butane. When I fold this guy in, that is my methyl propane. I don't need to specify where the methyl is because the methyl can only be in carbon number one. Sorry, carbon number two. Other thing I can do is I can double check my hydrogen numbers to make sure that they add up to 10. That's the other thing I can uh, make sure that I'm actually doing the right uh, structural formulas. Uh, I'm not accidentally making something new. And then with this one here, if I want to go name it, it would be butane again. So I know that's not one of my isomers. Questions, concerns, comments? All right. If I had something with a functional group, what I would do is long chain first, 
function of different carbon number one, so function of different carbon number two, and then I move to three, still on two, move to four, still on one. So once I maximize my goal, that, then I start shifting carbon, is usually what I do. So um, you'll see some examples of it, but just take your time, when in doubt, name it, because you name it and you realize it has the same name as another compound you've drawn, then you know it's not an nicer. Cool. All right. Moving on. Okay. So, and what I want you guys to try to find in that depth is a pair of identical molecules. So there's two molecules in there that are exactly the same. I've just drawn them differently, but when you go to name them, they would be the same molecule. And there's then also two pairs of structural isomers. Um, so basically, you're looking for three pairs in the set. So I'm going to grab those sets, and you guys have a chance to hunt around. It's a really good refresher for our isomers. All right, let me show you the identical pair is these two is the propane. So even though this is drawn differently and it's going up, that's not a methyl. We know that methyls can't be a carbon number one. So we go one, two, three, propane, one, two, three, propane as well. So that was the identical pair. Should I leave them out so you guys can see them? All right. This is one set of isomers. So when we're looking at them, they both have four carbons, and they both have ten hydrogens. All right, we've that so far. So it's a quick mental math and count This case here, we have a straight chain, so you chain. In this example here, we only have three, and we have a, a methyl coming off. So that's methyl. Uh, okay. When in doubt, name them. Yeah, and that's a good way to know whether or not you actually have an isomer. It was basically what I had here as my example. It's so basically the example I did. Yeah, are we good? Keep going? Okay. Last one was the double bond one. So, both of these, when we go to count, let me just move this down so it's there we go. When I go to count, there are four carbons, and there are going to be eight hydrogens. And there are eight hydrogens now because we have sacrificed two hydrogens to make it double bond. The thing that makes these guys uh, structural isomers to each other is that the double bond is between carbon one and two in that first example, whereas in this example, the, the double bond is between carbon number two and three. So, structural isomers. Cool. And we'll learn how to name them if you don't already know how to name them. But there is going to be a lesson on naming the these. We good so far? Yeah. I think you do. For my level two, and I didn't realize that I didn't fix it. There we go. Cool. Ready. So, I want you to draw an isomer. So, I've given you a molecular formula, and that molecular formula is C6H14. From that information already, we can tell you are dealing with an alkane. So, we see double the carbon number plus two. Uh, cool. There are five structural isomers to that. Um, I want you guys to do a little time test to see how quickly you can find them. So when you're ready, you can take out your device and set a timer and try to find all five. Cool. If you finish early, you can start on the side pad and work. Um, when you have your time, come on up to the board and write down your answer. Sound good? Yeah, I'm happy if you guys want to use your phone and you just take it out quickly as your timer. Whenever you're ready, start. Try to find the five. I'll do it as well. So you know what? I'm trying to. Are you just on the timer on your watch? As quickly as you can answer them. So it's like a stopwatch kind of thing. Yeah? All right. Maybe you can do it. 
I'm happy if you want to work together, if you want to work by yourself. But set yourself a timer. And then write your name and when you're time or Are you faster than the teacher? Bye. There should be five by my calculations. The same molecule. Yeah, that's the one there. All right, I've gotten five. Because I know I had a chance to know that it's doing this. All right, you want to know my time? Yeah, I got them all.